Hello, gorgeous. My name is Moloch. Moloch. <laughs> now, you might not have heard of me, but you've most certainly felt me. For I am the force behind fortune, the power behind progress, and the shaper of all success. And what a success even you could be, if you just listen to me. For I alone know what it takes to win, to be the most adored and the most beautiful. And you do want all those things, don't you? Yes. Well, listen close, because there are things you can do to tweak reality. Weapons you can use to crush your enemies. And you better use them, because if you don't, your enemies are going to use them to crush you. I want to win. You see, in the end, the world wants winners, not losers. And life, it isn't just a game, it's, it's war! war! Okay, uh, so today I want to talk about beauty, and specifically how new technologies on social media are changing our relationship with it. Because even though we've been using all kinds of tricks to make ourselves look hotter for thousands of years, it feels like it's getting extra intense lately. Like my Instagram, for example, at the moment, is just serving me up endless streams of insanely hot, sort of Kardashian-faced, beautiful women with perfect makeup. Not to mention a ton of plastic surgery recommendations. Thanks, algorithm. And if that's not enough psychological torment for you, now we have these AI-driven beauty face filter apps to contend with. And I mean, just look at this shit. You can feed it with the most horrific photo with no makeup, bad lighting, you name it. And with one click, bam, it'll turn you into the hottest possible Hollywood version of yourself. It's like glamour on steroids. And unsurprisingly, these apps are exploding in popularity. The most popular one, I'm not going to say its name, has 1.5 million doctored images downloaded from it every single day. And platforms like Snapchat and Instagram now have a range of different beauty filters built in for people to choose from. Oh, and not to mention TikTok, who were recently discovered to have been automatically applying a very subtle beauty filter to people's faces without even asking them. Yay, technology! No, but seriously, this stuff is dark. Like, believe me when I tell you that it can very easily train you to hate your natural face. And at least when I was a teenager, the worst I could do to myself was compare my face to hot celebrities in magazines. Whereas teenagers today, well, they are stuck comparing their faces to the hottest possible versions of themselves. So God knows what that's doing to them. Well, I'll give you a clue. They ain't doing great. And so, of course, to the most important question. Who can we blame? Well, unfortunately, the answer isn't as obvious as it might seem, because this is actually down to something much larger than any one particular influencer or app. What's really driving it is a force. And it's a force so ancient and powerful, it can turn anything, even something as lovely as beauty itself, down a dark path if we're not careful. The desire for physical beauty has long been a core part of nature, and the main reason for this is sexual selection, which is this somewhat controversial part of evolutionary theory which suggests that, all things being equal, animals would rather mate with the fittest and healthiest members of their species over the weaker ones. And it was from this pickiness that the phenomenon of physical beauty likely emerged, because it kind of acted as a visual signal of that health and vitality. And if history is anything to go by, us humans aren't much different. We just care about looking hot, and we like looking at hot people. And this trend doesn't seem to be slowing down. In 2019, the beauty industry was worth over half a trillion dollars for the first time, which to put into context is more than the entire space industry. So yeah, despite all our societal advances and highbrow modern values, it's pretty clear that, as a species, we still care about looking hot. You know, it's just a core part of our nature. And you know what else is a core part of human nature? Competition. Comp 
competition is everywhere. Whether it's over speed, strength, intellect, even hotness, we just love competing against each other. And even though some of us might be more naturally competitive than others, you cannot be serious. There's definitely some deep primal force within each of us making us want to win stuff. And this force can be an incredible motivator, driving us to achieve unbelievable feats. And it can also be a great force for social good, accelerating things like innovation and progress. Even something as collaborative as science has benefited from it, with things like awards and prizes that act as additional incentivizers. But that said, there comes a point where too much competition gets unhealthy, where players, either through the design of the game itself, or just through their own short-sightedness, end up doing things that are not only bad for their opponents, but even for themselves, and in some cases, for the wider world too. And these things are where my co-star Moloch comes in. Now, I'll go into much more depth on Moloch in the next video, but for now, just think of it as the god of unhealthy competition. A god that is so short-sighted and obsessed with winning, it doesn't appreciate the damage it causes. And this force of Moloch can infect almost any type of competitive system, from something as small as a family game of Monopoly, all the way up to religious or socio-political ideologies competing for global dominance. But today, I just want to focus on how Moloch might be infecting the world of beauty. Because if all these face filters and growing numbers of depressed teenagers is anything to go by, it's getting pretty dark. Oh, come on, you're making me seem like some kind of monster here. I simply enjoy watching people compete for fun, sexy prizes. And what's a better prize than being beautiful and having lots of followers? It's not my fault some people get carried away sometimes. And besides, dog-eat-dog -dog competition is what drives evolution forward. And look at all the beautiful wonders it's created! Yeah, but the thing is, not all these physical adornments are necessarily good for the individual animals. Like, sure, peacock feathers might look beautiful to us, and presumably pretty good to female peacocks too, but in reality, they make it very hard for the male peacock to fly, because they're really heavy, and they make him more conspicuous to predators. So, it's an example of where the pursuit of beauty can get decoupled from what's actually healthy. And this moment of decoupling can happen to us humans too, you know, where we become so overly obsessed with our physical appearance in some way that it ends up taking a toll both on our bodies and also our minds. Well, surely the amount of time or money people spend on their appearance is their own responsibility. Yes, well, obviously we have some degree of responsibility over our own well-being, and I'm certainly a big believer in letting people make their own choices. But that said, there are certain situations where we only really have the illusion of choice, where bad, powerful incentives can get us sort of trapped in an unhealthy competitive spiral that's really hard to escape from. Like, imagine a professional model who's so fed up with all her clients photoshopping her photos that she promises herself and all her friends that she's going to refuse to do any jobs that use digital retouching. Sounds honourable, but can she actually do that? Well, no, not if she wants to keep her job, because it's such a highly competitive industry that the moment she refuses, they'll just replace her with another girl who will. And while it might seem obvious that all the girls should just then band together and sort of create some anti-Photoshop pact, in reality, there's tens of thousands of models worldwide, and so it's almost impossible to coordinate amongst them all to sort of simultaneously do that. But even if they do manage to get one going, it won't last long, because there's always some girl who needs the money so much she'll end up breaking it. And then another girl will notice that and break it too and the next one, and the next one, until the whole thing falls apart and they're back to where they started. Well then surely it's the result of all those evil photographers choosing profits over their model's happiness. No, it's not even really their fault because they can't let their photo shoots get ruined by an uneven skin tone because then they won't get hired by the beauty brands. And the beauty brands, well, they've got their own competitive game going on. If they don't use these technologies, then their competitors will get ahead of them too. And you can keep just sort of going down and down throughout the entire sort of social media beauty industrial complex until you reach the bottom. You know what's there? You, Moloch. You and your bad incentives. 
You're acting like this is even a bad thing. Did you not see what women looked like back in the day? All these technological beauty weapons I've given you means that even the most average of you can look hotter than the hottest women of the Middle Ages, once you're all dolled up. Yeah, can't really argue with that, because actually a lot of this stuff does just make us look better. And to be clear, I'm a big fan of most of it. In fact, makeup is one of my favourite forms of art. But kind of like my example of the unhappy models and the peacock feathers, I suspect that these face filter apps are the ultimate example of how molecky forces can twist the pursuit of beauty to a dark place. Because social media influencing is only getting more and more competitive. And these apps are just so damn insidious. Like, look what this one does to Angelina. She's arguably one of the most beautiful women on earth, and it still finds a way to make her look hotter, only in very subtle and hard to detect ways. How can this be good for anyone's self-esteem in the long run? Well, the short answer is, it's not. With maybe the exception of one person. Because I tried this app out on a number of famous faces, and there was only one person whose face curiously didn't change much. That's right, the queen of Instagram herself, Kim Kardashian. Now, maybe that's just because her photos are already filtered. Or, as I suspect, she's who this particular app's AI is trained on. But either way, these apps just make you feel horrible. They're just so cheap and easy and effective at what they do. It's, it's like opening a Pandora's box of self-loathing. And in fact, there's even a term for this now, Snapchat dysmorphia, which was coined by plastic surgeons after they noticed so many people coming to them begging to be changed to look like their filtered selfies, which some experts are referring to as a full-on mental health crisis. Ugh, what new technology doesn't have some downsides here or there? It's not my fault if you dumb girls go too far with it. Besides, it now means that anyone who wants to make a living as a beauty influencer now can. Uh, no, because that's not how the economy works. Especially not now that it is literally the number one most desired job of Gen Z. But look at all the ones that have made it. It means that anyone could be the next viral sensation too. Even you. Surely that means it's worth it. No, I don't think it's worth anything to raise a generation of young people who think that being the next Kim Kardashian or whoever is some kind of lofty ambition. I mean, this social media game, it's your dream come true, isn't it? More and more kids abandoning their previous hopes and dreams in order to chase after some utterly unattainable prize, and meanwhile ignoring all the other career paths that are actually valuable. And who are you to judge their form of career choice? Talking down from your high horse when you are literally an influencer too. Yeah, but that's the thing. I'm not judging them. I'm judging you, Moloch, for making us feel like our latest social media numbers are all that matter. I'm judging you for turning beauty and art and creativity from fun activities into this vast attention game of who can score the most followers and honestly I'm so sick of your influence creeping into everything I just want to quit this social media rat race entirely well that's quite enough of my acting uh, I guess I've been watching a little bit too much contrapoints um, for those of you who don't know she's the queen of acting out dialogues with different characters that she's created. Uh, so hopefully it's given you a little bit of an overview of, of what this idea of Moloch is. Um, and I'm gonna do a much deeper dive in the next video. Um, in fact, I'm gonna do a whole series on Moloch because as you may have guessed, it, it applies to things much larger than face filters. In fact, it's kind of the root cause behind all sorts of things from outrageous healthcare prices to nuclear arms races, I mean, even climate change, in fact. So if any of those things are of interest to you, then do make sure you catch the next episode. Also, if you'd like to read a bit more about Moloch before, because I know I'm not the fastest, uh, check out the blog I've linked below called Meditations on Moloch by Scott Alexander, because honestly, that's the inspiration behind this episode and the entire series. It's, it's one of the most formative pieces of writing I've ever read. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. So if you like this, then do check it out. Anyway, uh, that's enough for me now here in my little den of madness that's disgusting. Uh, and my completely unmade up face, a deliberate choice, obviously, for dramatic effect. Here we are. This is it. Ah, this is actually quite intense posting this. Um, see you soon. And until then, just remember, don't hate the players, hate the game.